It's tabletop time and I am Evil Dave. Because today I am bringing you something I've worked on for most of my life. I'm bringing you chaos, chaos space marine. Something I've talked about occasionally on the channel, but uh, haven't ever shown off. And I'm starting that with something I still have, which Jazz has mentioned before he got rid of his childhood army. I didn't. And these are the first chaos space marines I've ever painted when I was a kid. And it's an army that I have collected for almost 20 years. This video is sponsored by Ravage Star Armies of the Veil Touched, an awesome project on GameFound created by Mini Wargamer's own Dave with models produced by Lazy Squire Games. I wanted to take you on the journey of my time with Chaos Space Marines, take you through some of my models while I paint up what I consider to be the pinnacle of everything that Chaos players love. My journey with Warhammer and Chaos Space Marines themselves begins as many people's did. It was right at the beginning of the Lord of the Rings strategy battle game launch, where this magazine came out and every week you'd get new models, paints and glues, etc. I convinced my parents to buy me the magazine and managed to get only about five issues deep before the advertisements for Warhammer 40K convinced me to tell my parents no more Lord of the Rings. No, I want those power armored space marines. But it wasn't the loyalists that drew my attention. As a longtime fan of villainous characters like Darth Vader and the stormtroopers of Star Wars, my young mind was drawn to the evil of the chaos space marines. I was the kind of kid that always rooted for the bad guys and wished they never made the stupid decisions that they made. And I think in hindsight, it was mostly because the bad guys always had the coolest stuff. As a kid, the big robots, mechs, tanks, guns, and bombs. It's always a lot more interesting than the ragtag assortment motley crew that ended up saving the day. And so with this vicious childhood intent, I found myself Chaos Space Marines. Not only was my painting talent limited, but so were my patience, my finances, and my tools available. I initially went with a completely custom chapter, painting these white trimmed blue Marines. And coming up with a symbol that I had imagined in my grisly mind was daubed on their shoulders with blood. At the time, my painting style could be best characterized as a liberal application of uh, red paint that I was convinced looked like blood. My interest in the hobby very quickly expanded and I did spend a bit more time painting, learning that I would do two thinner coats to paint colors such as white and adding golds into my repertoire a bit more. Yet still, I was limited by supply. I believe I only had the paints that had come with those Lord of the Rings kits and not much else. Getting my parents to buy me more stuff was, well, birthdays and Christmas sort of affair. So I did what I could with what I had. One of the first things I managed to get my hands on was green stuff. And from a very early age, I began to play around with converting things. These amateurish attempts were really great examples of what became my biggest passion in the hobby, which is making things my own. I did play a lot of games in this era and I was very lucky to be one of the players who started in Chaos 3.5. The glory days where you could make any one of your Saturday morning cartoon villain dreams come true with the amazing customization options and honestly face stomping tactics of the Chaos Space Marines. Beyond anything else at this era, the thing that I loved the most about Chaos Space Marines was the fact that they were elite terror personified. In this era, Chaos Space Marines reflected the Chaos Warriors of Warhammer Fantasy. They were everything the good guys were and more. The strongest and the best of the Space Marines were eclipsed by the best of the Chaos Space Marines. The law always represented them as being veterans of a 10,000 year old long war who were everything Space Marine could be, but amplified with the gifts of the Dark Gods. And the tabletop game reflected this. Your base stat lines were equivalent to Space Marines, but you could take all these boons of chaos, blessings, extra wounds, veterancy abilities that you would pay points for. It was really a glorious time for chaos in both the lore and the game. As 4th and 5th edition rolled around, we lost a whole bunch of that. A push towards the simplification of the game meant that Chaos Space Marine stat sheets became rather bland. But at the same time, the core feeling of the Chaos Space Marines still existed and they were definitely an elite force on the table. As I approached my later teens, I did what many, many people in this hobby do and kind of put Warhammer back on the shelves. Between around 17 and 22 years of age, I was busy discovering a lot of other things other than miniature figurines. One of the final kits I painted in my teen 
teen era, around 15 or 16, was my Defiler. And this was a sort of Christmas present gift. I adored this model. It represented the conquering of hell by chaos because they had enslaved this barbaric demon in a construct of steel and sent it against their foes. The ultimate personification of chaos space marine superiority at the time was the Obliterator. There was no other model on the tabletop like it. Its versatility and ability to swap between weapons and its honestly amazingly potent profile made them a dominating force on the battlefield. I would always field three of these as a kid. I loved them so much. They've long stood to be one of my favorite models in the Chaos range. So when it took them almost 20 years to update the model, it's safe to say I was a little bit sad. I went through stages of attempting to convert my own, and ultimately when the final release did come, we got two monopose obliterators that still can't be purchased outside of starter boxes, and it's been years. When I saw Ravage Star Armies of the Veil touched on GameFound, I have to say their obliterator-like techno monstrosities were the number one thing that drew my eye. I adore this kind of model. It is everything that chaos is supposed to be in my heart. Now, if you've been watching this video and it's been getting your juices flowing for chaos, the dark gods, and all the gribbly, spiky space warriors you could ever imagine, you'll love our sponsor today, Ravage Star Armies of the Veil vale Touched. After a massive and successful game found campaign, Ravage Star Armies of the Veil vale Touched is still available for a limited time using the pledge manager system on their game found page. The campaign includes multiple different packages of miniatures produced by Lazy Squire Games who have a whole lot of experience making high quality miniatures for some of their other board games. When you back Ravage Star, you can pick one of many heavily discounted bundles. If you're more interested in the heavier creatures and big monstrosities, perhaps the Armored Carnage War Pack is for you. However, if you like your Space Marines mutated beyond all recognition, perhaps the Horrors of the Veil vale Pack is more up your alley. Now this project has been spearheaded by Mini Wargaming's Dave, whose love and passion for chaos famously even outweighs is my own. That means all the miniatures created in this pack have been designed with the avid fan and collector at heart. Of special note, we have the Lore of Ravage Star, which includes the host of Veil Touched, led by the mighty Lord Davicus. And I must say, I approve of that name wholeheartedly. Davicus and his men have been forever changed by the Veil, and hopefully when you get some of these models, you'll be forever changed, wanting to paint awesome chaos monstrosities forevermore. For once you are touched by the Veil, you ain't getting untouched. With amazing sculpts all the way from the lowly cultists up to the mighty armored war machines of the Veil Touch, there truly is something for everybody in this game found. If you're a lover of chaos, I definitely recommend you go check them out. Now you know what I'm working with, I can't wait to get down and paint my Veil Scarred Mythos. <laughs> so 6th edition was out, Dark Vengeance was out, and there were plenty of kits for me to jump in on. At this stage, I noticed myself increasingly trying to capture the old vibe of Chaos Space Marines. And Thankfully, Horus Heresy had launched, and a whole bunch of the awesome old tech from that era was given 40k rules. My purchases began drifting away from the traditional plastic kits available in Games Workshop stores, and moving towards the more veteran Legion stuff that was becoming available through Horus Heresy. I picked up a Fire Raptor and a Sakaran tank, and this to me felt very much like the fire superiority of the Alpha Legion that I'd hoped to enjoy. My interest in demon engines waned, and my focus on old Legion strength was renewed. As additions pushed on and D-weapons and gargantuan creatures made the playing field untenable, I began to find myself detaching from enjoyment of the game at the time. Chaos Space Marines were periodically at the bottom of the pecking order in terms of casual competition. Well, the additions kept coming and they didn't stop coming. I got my chaos and I hit the ground running. It was time for me to update my paint scheme once again. Yes, as I mentioned earlier, I changed my paint scheme, admitting that I wanted to be Alpha Legion. You see, Legion traits were back through various supplements, and it was time to make it damn clear to my opponents that I was playing Alpha Legion. I continued my joy of converting models and updating my paint scheme to a level where I was pretty happy with it, incorporating Forge World transfers and starting to identify squads based on these transfers. When 8th edition dropped, all of the slates were wiped clean. Honestly, I think when I talk to some of my friends, we look back at the launch of Index 8th edition very fondly for competitive casual play. Everything felt so balanced, even if identity had been shaved away. It was very much like 4th edition in that way. I can't say it's the best Warhammer has ever been, but in the later years of supplement creep and the tenuous balance between codex releases and the 
honestly pretty pathetic way that Chaos were treated over the next few years. I'd say the start of 8th edition was a pretty good time. And so we push towards the modern day. I've continued to collect my Alpha Legion, but I must admit my interest had been slightly dwindling lately. I have this passion for the army and I feel like it's an army that Games Workshop has forgotten. It's changed. They've definitely changed the vibe and that's why it's so good to have longtime fans of spiky marines creating awesome things like Ravage Stars game found. It's clear that there's so much passion and love put into creating basically the models that we've all grown up with loving and we've all enjoyed. Filling the niches that many players want. Female chaos warriors, marines with crazy Archaeotech weapons. You know, the sorts of things you wouldn't just throw in the bin after a decades long heresy. And here we are today, me painting the first model in what I'm calling my Alpha Legion 4.0. I can't promise to know the future of chaos. There's a lot of rumors out there and there's a lot to be done. Hopefully their 9th edition codex will fix what I consider to be years of pretty poor treatment of their fan base and some new model releases to go alongside. I've heard rumor mills suggesting things like Traitor Guard alongside the Chaos Space Marines, which has been something many of us have longed for for a long time. I have a Renegades and Heretics army that was completely squatted, but as we've just found out, being squatted doesn't mean goodbye forever. So hopefully Games Workshop will continue to support my army, but if they don't, it doesn't matter. Because with awesome projects like Ravage Star, there is no shortage of amazing models to paint. But I've talked enough about my chaos journey for now, and I think I'm just about done painting this obliterator. Originally, I'd planned on painting all three of these models, but as I began to dive into this and uplifting and spending more and more time on this paint scheme, <clears throat> six hours doing the trim alone, I realized I wouldn't have time for it. I'll be painting the others later, lavishing all the time and attention on them I can. Because for now, this big lad's disgusting musculature has drawn all of my attention. Over the latest addition to my ever-expanding Alpha Legion army, I'd like to thank our brand new patrons who have joined the Dark Gods. That's Sean G, Shotgun, Andrew Lehman, Harley Driver, Price Stevenson IV, and Nikolai Rasmussen. We'd like to thank all our patrons for their contributions, enabling us to continue putting out as much content as we do. And thank you once again to our sponsor, Ravage Star Armies of the Veil Touched. It has been a true joy painting your awesome chaos models, and I think you should be proud of what you've all put together. Now, after doing all that work painting it to parade standard, I'd feel horrible dirtying it up, but maybe some weathering and chipping could be a way I could take my army in the future. I'm not quite sold on that yet. Chaos already have so much going on that adding even more freehand detail to these elaborate sculpts may just be a little bit too much, but I'm not decided on that yet. Let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you've all enjoyed this personal journey. It's been a little bit different to the videos we usually make, and if it's something you're into hearing about our views on Warhammer or the, our history with the game, it's certainly something I'd be interested in exploring more. I read all the comments down below after every video and it's always interesting to see all your insights and often some cool little tips and tricks that I can pick up myself. So there we go. We've gone too long. Hopefully you're uh, off doing something else or watching one of those recommended video cards. Um, and I'm just thinking about that. And I'm just thinking about when that new codex will drop. Ah. Chaos Space Marines not sucking. You might get dusted off after all, ancient boys. Oh, maybe not. <laughs>